at covering, uh, you know, at, in real time what's going on to get out of their homes, and the homes are flooded. Uh, so, you know, props to CNN and other places that are uh, doing the real-time coverage and have a whole lot more resources than I or CYT would have. With that said, that is where the compliments end. Uh, again, uh, the, thought, the thoughts and the focus should be on preserving life right now. So, uh, you know, that is obviously the most important thing. But I, I, I hate when you hear after these school shootings or after these storms, now is not the time to politicize. Now is not the time to politicize. No, now is the time to politicize because you bet your damn dollar. Or, uh, and, uh, yeah, in three, five day, three or four days, they'll be off to something else. And they will definitely, definitely uh, not look back. Do you, do you ever see any, like, real coverage on the aftermath, you know, a, a, over a decade now uh, of Hurricane Katrina, where parts of Louisiana are still in shambles? Do you ever really see uh, coverage uh, of Hurricane Sandy years later in New York and New Jersey, where parts are still, uh, have never come back from that, where people have lost their homes, have lost family members? Uh, you don't really see, you, you see the coverage in the moment. And then it fades into the distance. But what I, what I want to talk about and press the share button on this video is the fact that all these anchors, and again, credit where credit is due. CNN, MSNBC, they're doing a decent job right now in covering the real-time struggle that a lot of people are having, life or death. I actually have a friend of mine who's in the Houston area. I haven't spoken with her since yesterday. I mean, I'm hoping she's okay. I, I can't get in touch with her today. So they are covering it well in that retrospect. but. All these people are now, oh, the stunning images out of Texas and the unprecedented storm in Texas. And you hear this kind of language uh, when there's storms in other areas. You know, all these, out, all these anchors and columnists and pundits that live in New York and D.C. are stunned, absolutely stunned, by the images of homes nearly underwater, of people paddling in boats to get out of their cars. It's not shocking. It's not unprecedented. This is what climate change makes worse. Now, we could argue whether climate change causes this, but there is no argument that climate change makes the flooding from, you know, kind of aggravating, uh, kind of um, aggravating, annoying, to deadly. Deadly. So let me read you from The Guardian. Uh, who has a piece out today, what can we say about the role of climate change in the unprecedented, unprecedented disaster that is unfolding in Houston with Hurricane Harvey? There are certain climate change-related factors that we can, with great confidence, say worsened the flooding. I think they're even being a little charitable. It's not with great confidence. This is scientific fact. Sea level rise attributable to, attributable to climate change, some of which is due to coastal subsidence caused by human disturbances, such as oil drilling, is more than a half foot over the past few decades. That means a storm surge was half a foot higher than it would have been just decades ago, meaning far more flooding and destruction. So the flooding is what's causing death. The flooding is what's causing homes to be wiped away. The flooding is what's causing, uh, I just heard one person talk about hypothermia on, on TV. So Again, let me read it. Sea level rise attributable to climate change, some of which is due to coastal subsidence caused by human disturbance, such as oil drilling, is more than a half a foot over is more than a half a foot over the past few decades. That means the storm surge was half a foot higher than it would have been just decades ago, meaning far more flooding and destruction. I don't hear that fact on CNN. I don't hear those facts in the New York Times. I don't hear climate change activists or Josh Fox or scientists going on during the coverage of this storm talking about, hey, maybe if you paid a little more attention to climate change on a consistent basis and covered it like the crisis it is, maybe this wouldn't be so stunning. And maybe we could actually put in the safeguards like stopping this unprecedented level of oil drilling, which is making the flooding worse, from happening. But no, that wouldn't be sexy, would it? That wouldn't be sexy to cover climate change. That wouldn't be sexy to cover, uh, you know, human disturbance such as oil drilling 
is more than a half foot over the past few decades, that means the storm surge is a half a foot higher. But why aren't they covering things like oil dr drilling? Why aren't they covering the sea level uh, rising? Does it have anything to do with that a lot of these parent companies of places like CNN or MSNBC are in business with corporate America, are in business with the banks, are in business with energy companies? Energy companies advertise on CNN. Banks advertise on MSNBC. It's all one big cesspool, and you are not a part of that. So they're not going to actually cover how carbon emissions and power plants and the unprecedented level of oil drilling going on is contributing to the sea levels rising, thus contributing to unprecedented deadly flooding. They're not going to cover that. I think uh, FAIR, which is a group, uh, a group that I uh, quote uh, quite, a, quite a lot, and in my book, if you're not reading it, you should be, corporateconjob.com, in the second chapter, I got a lot of quotes from the head of FAIR, Jeff Cohen. And FAIR had a piece about uh, basically how the corporate media, obviously they don't cover climate change, but they point out in the presidential campaign how pathetic the coverage of climate change was. Let me read this to you. President Donald Trump's disastrous withdrawal of, US, of the U.S. from the Paris, Paris Climate Change Accord understandably has the media in a frenzy. Unconscionable and factuous, proclaimed the economist. Trump, quote, shamefully abandons the fight against humanity's greatest threat, wrote Bloomberg News. But when given the opportunity over the past four months of his presidency to ask Trump a question on climate change, no outlet has bothered to bring up the topic, topic at all. In their, in their respective interviews with Trump since he became president, the Associated Press, CBS, the New York Times, The Economist, NBC News, ABC News, Bloomberg News, Fox News, Breitbart, Reuters, Time Magazine, and the Financial Times all failed to ask Trump the, uh, his climate change views or policies. The same economist in Bloomberg who now laments in almost uh, ap uh, ap 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 apocalyptic terms Trump withdrawal from the Paris Accords when given the opportunity to press Trump on his cr climate change policies or even broach the subject at all, they chose not to. Fair could not find a single question about climate change in any interview or press conference with Trump since he took office on January 20th, uh, 2017. Now, uh, during the 2016 presidential and vice presidential general election debates, neither had a single question on climate change for either Trump or Hillary Clinton. There hasn't been a mention of, quote, climate change in any of the post-primary debates since October 2008. Did you hear me right? There hasn't been a single mention of climate change in any of the post-primary debates since October 2008, when CBS's Bob Schaefer referred to it as climate control in a question that wasn't even about climate change, but dependent on foreign oil. Liberal media watchdog Media Matters annual study found that in 2016, evening newscasts and Sunday shows on ABC, CBS, NBC, as well as Fox News Sunday did not air a single segment informing viewers of what to expect on climate change and climate-related policy issues or issues, including the Paris Agreement under a Trump or Hillary Clinton administration. Let me say that again. Liberal watchdog Media Matters, who I don't like, but at least in this study they have it right, found in 2016 the evening newscast, newscast CBS, NBC, uh, ABC, and Fox News Sunday, they did not fair air a single segment informing viewers of what to expect on climate change and climate-related issues, including a Paris Agreement under a Trump or Hillary Clinton administration. So this goes with every single thing I and other independent media experts, uh, ac um, experts, <laughs> sometimes I'm an expert, um, journalists talk about. These folks cover it in the moment. They act stunned. They act these unprecedented, look at the stunning photos, how could this be? But you don't hear them talking about climate change. You don't hear them talking about the facts surrounding why is this flooding so much worse than it was in the past? Why are, level, uh, why are cities like New Orleans and now Texas being, you know, buried underneath the water? Let me read you a little bit more from this Guardian piece. In addition to what I talked about with the oil drilling, sea surface temperatures in the region have risen about 0.5 degrees Celsius, that's close to 1, 1 Fahrenheit, over the past few decades from roughly 30 Celsius, which contributed to the very warm sea surface temperatures. There is a simple thermodynamic relationship known as the Clausius 
Clapeyron equation that tells us there's a roughly 3% increase in average atmospheric moisture content for each 0.5 degrees Celsius of warming. Sea surface temperatures in the area where Harvey intensified were 0.5 to 1 degree Celsius warmer than current day average temperatures, which translates to 1 uh, to 1.5 degrees Celsius warmer than average temperatures a few decades ago. That means 3 to 5 degree more moisture in the atmosphere. So, translated, what I just said, it ain't sexy. I obviously am not an expert on it. I'm reading for The Guardian. It's not sexy. It's not easy to understand. It's not easily digestible. But let me ask you a question. When there's a school shooting or a movie shooting or uh, a, a mall gets shot up, they cover it quite a bit. After, they have gun control people on and they have NRA fanatics on. Right? Why is it that when these storms are covered, there is literally zero on cable news about how climate change is making it worse. Why is that? I think I know the answer. I think you know the answer. And of course, the Young Turks get criticism sometimes about certain things they cover, certain things they don't cover. I criticize them sometimes. But Young Turks has led on covering climate change. Young Turks just ain't the deal to do a climate change documentary. Uh, other independent media, Jimmy Dore, Kyle Kalinske, Lee Camp, Democracy Now!, RT, I mean, it goes on and on and on. We cover climate change because we understand it is a crisis, and we are not constrained by a multi-billion dollar corporate conglomerate parent company saying, no, 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 you can cover the storm, but don't tell the audience what's really causing it. Five people lost their lives, it might be, and it's probably going to be end up being more than that. You want to know what else? Probably tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, are going to lose their homes. People are going to lose their livelihoods. It's not just their homes. People's small businesses might be affected. And for what reason? For what reason are they losing their lives and losing their homes and losing their businesses? and getting the physical damage, and the injuries, and the tra post-traumatic stress. Why, are, why is that happening? Now, don't get me wrong. Even if we did every single thing right on climate change, it doesn't mean there's not going to be natural disasters. It doesn't mean that people might not possibly die. But you have a much greater chance of death, or loss of property, loss of life, injuries, loss of your business, if nothing is done about climate change, because the climate change is causing the flooding to go from an aggravation and something that's going to require a lot of cleanup to, to a deadly force. And for the haters out there who say, oh, you're full of shit, you don't know what you're talking about, I listen to scientists. If you want to listen to Rush Limbaugh and Fox News, that's your choice. I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. I am not a math expert, and I am not a science expert, but I am an expert on listening to people who know what they're talking about. So, that's the deal. On one, in one area, I say, listen, if you want to cover it in real time, if you want to watch in real time what's going on in Houston right now, don't watch me. Watch CNN. Watch MSNBC. They have more satellites. They have more trucks. They have more helicopters flying over than the Young Turks or other independent media. So, for real time uh, coverage, watch them. Because, you know, I'm watching them. I want to see what's going on there. I want to see people stranded. I want to see the effects of what we're doing, or not doing. But if you want to actually know what's causing this, well, not going to find it there. Certainly not going to find it there. And by the way, it's not a coincidence that you don't see any questions on climate change during presidential election debates. It's not a coincidence that you don't see any questions to Trump on climate change. It's not a coincidence that after Trump backs out of the Paris Climate Change Accord, they cover it for a day or two, and then they move on. They're not interested in the planet. They're not interested in actually covering the crisis that is going on because it's bad for business. That's the sad truth. So, uh, I'll continue covering it. I think that uh, it's very important that we tell the truth on climate change. It's very important that in terms of saving our planet, it actually moves away from being a political issue because it's really not a political issue. There should really be, there really shouldn't be such a separation on truth and fact, whether you're progressive, conservative, Tea Party, whatever, 
Science, science is science, and that's the problem. And the corporate media isn't helping it, because the corporate media should be leading the charge with their resources and informing the public why is it that deadly floods are wiping out people and homes and killing people. It's not a coincidence, and it's not an accident, and it's not stunning. These images are not stunning. They're terrible to watch, they're horrifying, but they're not stunning. It's not unprecedented. What, you know, I grew up on Long Island. Nobody on Long Island would have ever thought that there could be a storm like Hurricane Sandy years ago. That's climate change, folks. Storms don't usually rock uh, the north. So I'll continue covering it uh, as best as I can. I'm about to go on Facebook. So follow me to uh, TYT Politics Facebook, where I'm going to do a video on the DNC law, uh, DNC fraud lawsuit being dismissed. Thanks for watching.